Prostate cancer is the most common male cancer in the UK and 25% of new male cancers are prostate cancers. Worldwide it is the second most common cancer in men and the fifth most common cancer overall. The lifetime risk in the UK of someone getting prostate cancer is 1 in 8 and the instance in developed countries is rising but this is mainly down to the increased detection by PSA testing. Family history is an important factor in prostate cancer. Men with a brother or father with prostate cancer have a 2.5 times greater risk of developing the disease and men with a close relative with breast cancer also have an increased risk of developing prostate cancer. Men with the BRCA1 and 2 gene mutations have an increased risk of prostate cancer and the cancers also tend to be more aggressive. Another very significant risk factor is race. Black African Caribbean men have a three times greater risk of developing prostate cancer than white men and the disease tends to be more aggressive. Men that are Asian, Chinese and Japanese have a lower risk of developing prostate cancer. Interestingly, the taller a man is, the more aggressive the prostate cancer will tend to be and diabetic men have a reduced risk of developing prostate cancer. Obese men are known to have an increased mortality from prostate cancer and heavy smoking is another adverse factor in prostate cancer. Men who have higher levels of occupational physical activity have a reduced risk of developing the disease. There is now evidence that foods containing selenium and lycopenes help protect against prostate cancer developing. Particularly beneficial foods include soy, pulses, tomatoes, cruciferous vegetables, Brazil nuts, sunflower seeds and fish. Perhaps the most frequent presentation of prostate cancer is through the PSA level being found to be higher than expected for the age of the patient or a rising PSA, lower urinary tract symptoms, abnormal digital rectal examination and symptoms of advanced disease such as bony metastases may also be forms of presentation of prostate cancer. Sometimes prostate cancer is found incidentally in TURP chips for benign prostatic hyperplasia. There are many advantages and disadvantages of PSA testing. It has to be borne in mind that two of three men with a raised PSA will have a negative prostate biopsy and one in five men with prostate cancer have a normal PSA. PSA follow-up however is invaluable for monitoring patients with treated prostate cancer. Prostate cancers tend to have a peripheral location in the prostate, hence the detection by rectal digital examination. Prostate cancers may also be diagnosed through a raised serum PSA, transrectal ultrasound and prostate biopsies. Prostate cancers are adenocarcinomas composed of a single layer of malignant epithelial cells. This is in contrast to benign prostatic glands that are composed of an inner layer of epithelial cells and an outer layer of basal cells. Prostate cancers have a microacinate appearance. This means that the tumour is composed of small glands and the tumour may show a continuum of differentiation from 
well differentiated tumour where the glands are so well differentiated that it may be difficult to distinguish them from benign glands through to tumours that are so poorly differentiated that there is no glandular differentiation and the tumour cells are present in sheets and as single infiltrating cells. This is a slide showing prostate cancer. Two stains have been used. One is a red stain which is the race maze and this stains cancer cells. The other stain is a brown stain and this stains basal cells. This slide clearly demonstrates that the acini of the prostatic carcinoma lack a basal cell layer. Prostate cancers are graded using the Gleason grading system. The principle of the system is to assess the architecture of the tumour. Tumours with a low Gleason grade will show good glandular differentiation, whereas tumours with a high Gleason grade will show poor or absent glandular differentiation. One of the slight complications with the Gleason grading system is that grade 1 is no longer used because when Gleason grading was first described, what was assumed to be cancer and termed Gleason grade 1 is now considered to be benign. So Gleason grading uses grades 2, 3, 4 and 5 with grades 3 and 4 being by far the most frequently used. These are discrete single acini and this is typical of Gleason pattern 3. The acini here are fused and this produces a cribriform type appearance and this is typical of Gleason pattern 4. The Gleason score is achieved by adding the grade of the predominant pattern to the grade of the second most predominant pattern. So for example if the main pattern is 3 and the second most predominant pattern is 4 then the Gleason score will be 3 plus 4. Conversely if 4 is more predominant than 3 then it will be 4 plus 3. The important thing is that a Gleason 3 plus 4 tumour will tend to behave better than a Gleason 4 plus 3. And that is why the Gleason score is so useful in assessing prostate cancers. Locally, prostate cancers may spread to the urethra, seminal vesicles, bladder and rectum. When prostate cancers spread to the lymph nodes, it is the iliac, sacral and paraaortic lymph nodes that are first affected. Prostate metastases tend to go to the bones, producing osteosclerotic deposits, particularly in the vertebrae, femur and pelvis. Prostate cancers may also metastasize to the liver and lungs. This is an example of a Gleason 5 plus 5 adenocarcinoma. You can tell it's 5 plus 5 because there is no asana differentiation, there are solid sheets of infiltrating cells and infiltration by single cells. In fact this tumour biopsy was taken from the rectum so this unfortunate patient had prostate cancer that had spread to the rectum. The treatment of prostate cancer depends on a number of factors including the age of the patient, the grade of the tumour, the stage and volume of the tumour. Treatments for prostate cancer include radical prostatectomy where the prostate and seminal vesicles are surgically removed and radiotherapy. Many prostate cancers are dependent on testosterone for growth and this means that a variety of drugs that have an anti-androgen or oestrogenic effect are useful for treating the disease. These include luteinizing hormone, releasing hormone analogues, still bestrol and anti-androgens. Castration is a less commonly used alternative. 
Older patients with low volume, low grade disease may be offered watchful waiting with PSA follow-up and no active treatment.